Okay, we're taking apart a three-piece foreign crankshaft, and we got her set up in a 20-ton uh, press here, and we're using just a standard bearing puller that you can buy uh, at any industrial supply shop, and obviously two large solid steel blocks here to rest the uh, mechanism up against. So, and we're using a nice stout hardened pin, obviously a little smaller diameter than the actual crank pin in the center of the crank to push it apart. So we'll start applying some pressure here and uh, hopefully get this pin popped out. And we can remove the rod and the uh, bearing and the crank pin and take a look and see what it looks like. And there we go. We got it popped apart. Now we can visually just uh, remove the rod. Move the rod off the, uh, the pin itself and we'll take a look at the cage and uh, see what it looks like here and check our wear on our crank pin. And uh, most likely we'll replace the pin in the cage and we'll measure the rod to see what kind of run out we got on it. If it's uh, about two or three thousandths will be a, a tenth of a thousandth. We'll probably let that go. We'll check that in the next series. What we did here. We took our rod off the crank a little while ago. We showed you. Now we're going to measure this rod. Since it's used, we're going to measure this rod with our air gauge to see if, what the tolerance is and if it's not around at all. If it's been stretched. A brand new rod should be uh, zero, obviously, uh, as far as the idea of the bottom of the rod, which is our most important thing to kind of check. So our air gauge, we're going to set it at zero here. And this gauge here is measured in tenths. Every hash mark is a tenth of a thousand. So we're going to put the rod on there and spin it around. And see what we got here. This rod here looks like it's about two to three tenths out around, which is kind of it's within our window. I'd say three to four. I would throw it away, depending on what uh, type of racing you're doing. Obviously, zero is better. This is how you check your rod. You can make your own opinion up of what the, you know, what for your usage is going to be if you want to toss it or keep it. But this is how we measure the rod to see if it's, if it's still uh, in tolerance. So what we did is put the uh, obviously we put the two halves up on top of the pin here, and I got a nice stout uh, hardened uh, block here around the cylinder type piece that I'm using to press it back together again. So. It's you can buy a fancy fixture for a thousand bucks if you want to uh, press the cranks back and forth. Uh, there's a couple guys that make them, carding people. Uh, but if you don't have one, you just kind of put this thing up here on the blocks again and go ahead and use a straight edge and get this thing eyeballed in as close as you can with a little bit of pressure on the pin so it's just getting started. And it looks like we got our square here and we just kind of tap it together to make sure that uh, we got both edges lined up with a little uh, copper hammer so we don't damage the cheeks and we're ready to, ready to go back together again so here we so again we'll apply pressure here with our press a 20 ton press and if you got everything lined up it should go together no problem it doesn't want to go in, you got some issue. Either got the wrong crank pin or you're you're going in cockeyed on an angle. So once you get it all the way down it will bottom it'll bottom out and make a little tap noise and uh, that'll you know indicate that you're you're completely together and it's against the pin with our little bushing uh, block here. Uh, take a look, make sure no, we're not quite done, so we gotta hit it again. same time we're checking our rod make sure that we don't have anything bound up or got the improper thrust washer or something okay my pressure's building back up again it feels like I'm almost home and now we check it out and take a look when well, we're nice and flush so our cranks back together again we pressed her together now I'm going to double check and try to get these exactly lined up square 
uh, by eyeball again I can see where I got a little bit of uh, a little bit off here so I got to tap these cheeks and get them aligned by eyeball with my straight edge before I go to my V block dial indicator process so actually it's kind of crude you take a big copper hammer it's obviously it's softer than the material here that we're going to be hitting so got to use a copper hammer we'll actually take a whack on this thing and try to get these cheeks lined up go ahead and check with our straight edge again and it looks like I'm, I'm pretty close on this side here flip it over to the other side and I'm good over there also so the next step would be to measure all the way around the thickness from the crank pin area on each side of the crank pin see what we have and we want to get that as close as possible to the same all the way around and right now we're within a thousandth the thickness all the way around we got our edges straight we're ready to put it up on the V blocks and spin it to make sure it's running true out on the ends where your flywheel and your adapter shaft etc be, uh, will be screwed on Okay, what we're doing here is setting up a Comet crankshaft, a three-piece foreign crankshaft, after we've pressed it together, and we're trying to make sure we got the uh, PTO and the uh, rotary valve side lined up correctly and running a zero, uh, if possible, zero run-out tolerance. So we got it set up in a couple of V-blocks here with a, uh, a rapid, inter-rapid gauge, and we're spinning the V-blocks, checking out on the end of the crank pretty far out in between a keyway and an actual uh, step here so obviously perfect would be zero and we're running about about a half a thousandth out here so uh, anything less than one I would I'd say that's good enough and we would rotate it over the other side obviously and check the op the opposite side to make sure it's at zero which we've already done that and it is less than one <laughs> 